Now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 807 on WMAL. Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson with you. Pleased to have the governor of Virginia on the phone, Bob McDonald, who was recently in Wisconsin. And, Governor, I want to get into local issues, but uh, you were there. Scott Walker's up for his recall election today. Polls show that he is leading, although it probably will be very close. I look at this race and I say it's one of the most important non-presidential elections we've had in a generation. Do you see it that way, and if so, why? Well, good morning, and thanks for having me on. Sure, uh, no guess, problem. Uh, to be fair, I was uh, on the tarmac at Dulles for three hours waiting to go to Wisconsin. Oh. But weather prevented me from actually getting there last week. Okay, oh, I, I didn't know that. Sorry. Be- with them last week. But anyway, uh, yes, the importance of this election, I think, cannot be overstated. I believe it's only the third recall of a governor in in, uh, in history. And here's why it's important. Uh, this is a political leader, uh, Scott Walker, uh, with the courage to take office and assess the fiscal situation and the competitive situation of the state and to tell the people honestly, listen, we can't afford some things anymore. We're going to have to make some cuts. Uh, we're going to have to restructure government, and we're, I'm going to do exactly what I told you I was going to do during the campaign. So uh, that's why this is important, and, and the results, I think, are why Scott Walker will win the election today. People may not have uh, uh, been popular. Some of the reforms may not have been fully understood or popular at the time, but they're but they're working. He's reduced a 3.6 billion dollar deficit without raising taxes, first property tax cuts in 30 years, jobs are up 30,000 last year. Uh, so he's, it's working, and I think he'll win. All right. The, um, the polls in the Commonwealth of Virginia currently show that if the election were held today, it would be a tie between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. Your assessment? Well, the good news is the election is not held today, <laughs> number one. Uh, and number two, the trend is certainly going Mitt Romney's way. I think, if, of course, Brian, we're in the middle of a contested Republican primary uh, when uh, four candidates are going at it pretty hard. Uh, Mitt Romney's negatives were, were pretty high, and it was, uh, it was uh, you know, a contentious fight. Now it's head-to-head. It's, it's uh, Barack Obama's record versus Mitt Romney's uh, uh, vision for the country, and I think uh, as that uh, as people have seen those two side by side, it gets better for Mitt Romney, and I think he will uh, he will win Virginia. Do you think it would help if he had a vice president, uh, you know, who say, for example, might <laughs> no, come from the state would, of Virginia? Here's what it'll help. Uh, you know, people look at uh, a 16 trillion dollar deficit, uh, the largest in, in American history, the largest increase in in debt in American history from 10 to. 16 trillion, and they say this president doesn't have a plan. In fact, his budget would have got us to 25 trillion by 20, uh, 2021. I think what will help is people hearing a plan from Rick Romney that understands the American dream, that understands business, that understands free enterprise, uh, outlining how we get out of this. And so I'm uh, I'm very encouraged that what's going to win in Virginia is not uh, not the vice presidential candidate, uh, but Mitt Romney's ideas on jobs and debt reduction. Uh, Bill Bowen, the lieutenant governor, um, who's running for governor, um, wants to make sure that when the primaries occur for the Republicans, that it does occur as a as a primary, not a convention as has been in the past. That apparently is up for some decision uh, coming up. Uh, the committee is, is going to reconsider that. They decided last time around to have a primary, not a convention. Um, do you favor a convention or do you favor a primary? Well, I favor sticking by the rules that were set over a year ago. Uh, that's the concern to me. And uh, uh, the Central Committee of the Republican Party voted uh, a year ago almost to say that the rules this time would be a primary. And candidates for all the offices got in knowing that it was going to be a primary. And so now, uh, less than a year to go before the nominating process uh, convenes to change the rules to back to a convention, I think it's just flat wrong. It creates no predictability for candidates about how these rules are going to change, and they could change again. So I think we ought to stick with the primary. Uh, in 2009, when I uh, was elected, I was elected in a convention, and uh, people uh, asked me to try to change it uh, to a primary at the time, and I said, no, we cannot change the rules midstream. At the same scenario. So I'm disappointed that people would want to change this. Uh, there's a fair debate about whether a convention or a primary is better. Uh, that's for another day, but don't change the rules midstream. 
You know, when you were with us here in studio last time, you mentioned that we should watch very closely an IG report that was going to come out regarding MWA. That's the airport authority. Yes. And the, and the question at the time was, is this the right organization to sort of monitor the Dulles Rail Project? Well, the IG report came out, and there were all kinds of evidence of, uh, of uh, spending uh, uh, taxpayers' dollars in a wasteful manner. There are all kinds of questions about no-bid contracts that have been let uh, a, a tremendous number of them, the, like $600 million worth of no-bid contracts, have been let by MWA over the last couple of years. As you look at that IG report, where do you stand now on uh, MWA and their continued uh, management of the Dulles Rail Project? Well, that was a decision made three or four years ago by Governor Kane to turn over uh, the management of the uh, second phase of Dulles Rail to uh, to uh, MWA, there's some structural concerns that the majority of the board members actually are from outside of Virginia, and yet Virginia taxpayers pay most of the freight, which is a, a problem. I'm very concerned about the results of uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation IG report. I've read through the report. There are any number of serious uh, issues that were raised that need to be addressed and, and fixed uh, immediately. But I look back just the last year where there were bad decisions made about a $400 million cost to, uh, cost for an underground station that wasn't necessary, uh, a mandatory PLA that is being considered that I believe would violate Virginia law and drive up the cost of the project, uh, all the things that are uh, in this report uh, about uh, management and uh, spending issues. Well, what, what can you do contract. about it as governor? Well, well, I've uh, been very clear with them on all these things that they, they need to be uh, addressed. And uh, for Virginia to make a commitment to increase its financial commitment to the project, uh, these things need to be addressed, starting with that PLA. I understand they're going to take it up, uh, I believe, tomorrow uh, in a vote. Uh, and uh, we had uh, new laws passed in Virginia this year that uh, say you cannot have that kind of mandatory PLA. The good news is over the last year, as my uh, Secretary of Transportation and the U.S. Secretary working together have been able to shave a full billion dollars off the cost of that pro project from 3.8 to 2.8 billion. billion. Uh, so we're heading in the right direction, but my concern is until uh, Virginia's new board members that were approved by federal law last member get seated, uh, and the MWA board continues to refuse to seat them, and the other new members get seated, uh, we're not going to have the turnaround that's necessary. But the things in that IG report have got to be corrected. It's not fair to the taxpayers and the toll payers in Virginia uh, to have these kinds of problems which jack up the cost. So I'm, I'm hopeful that with the new executive director, Mr. Potter, that we're going to have we're going to have some improvement there. Scott Walker going to win tonight? Well, that's my projection. I can only tell you for 20 consecutive polls up there, he's been ahead. Uh, although it's close, it's three to five points. They have same-day registration. Both sides are motivated. The unions on the other side, and the Republican and conservatives on uh, on our side to uh, get the vote out. I think it is clearly a get-out-the-vote election. It's a very divided electorate, but 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 Scott Walker has gotten results uh, in jobs, in property tax cuts, in fiscal uh, uh, the fiscal management of the budget, and I do think voters will reward him in a close result today. Governor McDowell, it's always good to have you on. Thanks for showing up, and we'll talk to you down the road.